Good morning. Um, today I want to make a short fault finding video uh, with some hardware that's been sent in to me. That didn't do what it was supposed to. So first I'm going to show you what is supposed to happen. Then I'm going to show you what doesn't happen and then we're going to troubleshoot it. Okay, so um, <coughs> here we have a perfectly working board and uh, you can see it's flashing. So now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to simulate a corrupted firmware um, by just flashing some random binary on it using the updater. Okay, it says update done, but you can see there's no more flashing. And <coughs> but if we look onto a serial console, uh, we can see the bootloader keeps uh, the, the board keeps cycling through the bootloader. So now we will have no problem just flashing a valid firmware, and the board will be back to work. Let me show you the proof. And um, I mean, what's what's happening here is I've <coughs> I've activated. No, sorry, I still have a cold. <coughs> um, I have activated the hardware watchdog in the STM32. And basically, if the firmware doesn't uh, periodically trigger it, uh, it, the processor is restarted automatically. And then, of course, it cycles uh, through the bootloader, printing this 2D. Um, bootloader message. Um, yeah, so the invalid firmware that we've uh, flashed on there obviously doesn't trigger the watchdog, so this happens. So let's flash the regular firmware on there. And we can see flashing takes place. And we have a blinky lab again. Good, so that's what we do want. Now let's have a look at what we do not want. Okay, let's run open OCD. And we can see a blinky lead. <coughs> and New window. Let's open the terminal again. Yeah, lost my history. And we have a perfectly working terminal. Now we will also flash an invalid firmware. Okay, blinky lead is gone. Now let's go back to the terminal <coughs> and we can see nothing. On the other board we saw the 2D um, rebooting message. Here we don't. Why is that? Um, so to debug this we need the data sheet. Um, okay, so that's a bit of a giveaway. Mm. Actually, what I did first when I was uh, debugging this is... Uh, I'm not going to show this in full length, but just so you know how I approached it. So this is the independent window watchdog that's being run by a separate clock inside here. Um, so basically what I did is I looked at all these registers. Um, and just made sure the watchdog was correctly configured, and it was. So the problem wasn't here. So that's why I went to this uh, register, and this has a couple of interesting flags. Uh, one is the LSI ready. LSI is a low, low something clock, maybe it's... Um, internal low speed oscillator ready and enabled. And that low speed oscillator is the oscillator that runs the independent watchdog. Okay, so we want to see this ready. And there's another interesting flag, and that is 
the where is it? Pin reset, software reset. Um, yeah. So is the watchdog if if the independent watchdog resets the device, this flag will be set for, for diagnosis, so you know when your device is booting up why it was reset in the first place. Okay, so this is um, a bit very command line style. Um, so now we have access to the on-chip debugger. And we want to read this register. Now, sadly, uh, it, it doesn't say the absolute address here. <laughs> so we have to open another datasheet and see what is the base address of the independent watchdog. And the base address is hex 4000 uh, 3000. No, sorry, that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for the RCC. 4,002, 1,000, okay. Um, and we're issuing the command memory read word, if I remember correctly. Hmm, maybe not. That's, no, 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 I don't remember. Memory display word. Yes, that's what we want. Okay, so for zero x whoops. Four, two, one, and now we need to look at the offset, which is 24. So this reads uh, one. Okay, so um, yeah, let's uh, take a look. And we can see these flags are set. Let's plug them into the calculator. So we see which bits are set. Um, so we see bit 31 is set, bit uh, is not set, 30 is not set, but bit 29 is set, and that is the independent watchdog reset flag. So the watchdog is apparently trying to reset, but it doesn't manage to reset. Hmm. Why is that? Well. Um, you have to go on the internet for that. So this guy has the same problem. And the question is, are you driving reset externally? So basically, um, the internal watchdog, or the, the reset, happens internally by putting the reset pin low internally. And, of course, if that's uh, tied high externally, it cannot be pulled low. So let's um, take a look. At a circuit diagram. Um, so basically, here we see the oops, the reset circuit. Let's see if I can highlight it for you. No, I cannot. So R8 is 1k, and then there's a capacitor of 10 microfarad, and that ties reset high. So okay. 1k pull up, sounds okay. Let's take a look at the original Olimax header. And there we see there's some sort of reset circuit. And the pull up to the VCC is 10k. And also the capacitor is a bit lower. Um, so, what's uh, apparently happening here is that the reset pin is being tied high um, to yeah with too low resistance so it, it cannot reset and here we actually see the well the recommended reset pin protection and we don't see any pull up resistor at all Hmm. Okay, so I have now removed um, the pull-up resistor 
because according to the datasheet that's not needed. And I've replaced uh, the well the low pass capacitor C9 uh, by a one microfarad instead of ten microfarad one. So let's look at the console. Aha, we see periodic resets. Hmm. So that means we should now be able to flash the firmware. And here we go. And we're back to our blinky LED. Okay, so I hope you liked this troubleshooting video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Like, no, like is thumbs up. Share and subscribe. And yeah, check out the links in the description for the Patreon page, the shop, and the new Open Inverter forum. See you next time. Bye-bye.